Hey guys, I'm Leo. I'm Frank. And welcome to a brand new episode of Terror Recollect. Hey guys, thanks for joining us and thanks for watching. As always, this is episode four of Terror Recollect. Since we didn't get to uh, delve into Leo's top five from last week, we are going to be discussing and focusing on that this week. So Leo, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to be focusing on my top favorite uh, non-mainstream horror movies. Now, when people think of the term mainstream, what do people think of? Halloween. Like Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Texas Street. Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th, Child's Play. Um, and so I'm not going to be dealing with those, but I'm also not necessarily going to be dealing with the super obscure movies. What I'm going to be focusing on is maybe like straight to video releases, stuff that I encountered at the video store or maybe on Cinemax or something growing up. So let's start off, I mean, get right into it. Let's get right into it. What's your it? number five? Number five for me is the movie Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall is a movie that is set in the 80s in a shopping mall. And as most of you know, a shopping mall is something that is always constantly being renovated yeah. to deal with the present day needs of, of the culture, the yeah. society. Um, but that's one of the reasons I love it because it has that 80s feel. It's set in a shopping mall. Uh, I was a kid in the 80s. I have a thing for gorgeous 80s girls and there's a whole bunch of them in there. So that's what immediately drew me to this movie. So the movie is basically about an army of robots that are there as a security force to protect the mall at night yeah. when the, the mall is supposed to be closed. There is a lightning strike and the robots are activated and maybe a little something happens to them. Um, so they're there now out patrolling the mall looking for people who are not supposed to be there. So mm. technically the robots are doing their job, right, although yeah. a bit of a twisted version of it. Yeah. They did not count on the horny teenagers yeah. who are in the furniture store section of the mall who are just trying to have a good time. The horny teenagers always causing trouble. They always mess it up. It's like a staple of a horror movie. Yeah. It's almost, you almost look forward to it. Yeah. Like, in which way are they going to spin the horny <laughs> 80s teenager right. uh, motif? It's a very, very fun uh, poster art. It's got a little bag with eyes and blood and... Uh, it's definitely something that makes you go, what in the heck is this? I definitely want to see it. And it's funny because, if I cut you off real quick, the uh, I just watched this movie uh, not too long ago because mm -hmm. he always told me about how great it was, mm -hmm. and it's one of his favorites. So I watched it the, uh, not too long ago. And it's funny, if you hadn't told me it was about robots, it's seeing the, the cover art and hearing the title back when I was a kid, I just thought it was another slasher movie. You would have thought it would be like maybe like the, the security killer, guard, right? Yeah, or crazy. Or, or, a, or a deranged like yeah. uh, mental patient yeah. escapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, when you realize it's killer robots, it's it, that was a big surprise, or it would have been a surprise if you hadn't told yeah. me. Yeah. But yeah. um, I. It's like know. Johnny Five from Short Circuit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, goes crazy. Yeah. And a bunch of his friends want to kill a bunch <laughs> of teenagers. Some really cool, interesting kills too. So that, that that's my number five pick. So let me ask you, uh, what is your favorite scene in that movie? Uh, there's a scene, I guess one of the kids' parents owns the furniture store and a couple of them work there. So this is all, this is the girls getting to get to know the guys. And it's very throwback to 80, the way things were in the 80s. I mean, these days everybody's texting yeah. each other. So it was cool to see this kind of throwback to the way that, you know, people met each other and the girls with the big <laughs> puffy hair. It's so dated that yeah. it makes me love it. Number four? Number four for me is a little movie called Puppet Master 2. Oh, Puppet Master. Puppet Master 2. Well, first of all, these are all straight to video movies. Full Moon. I yeah. don't think Full Moon Entertainment, who produces these, ever made a movie that ever went to the theaters. I don't think so, but most of them were actually really great. So. They're actually very fantastic yeah, yeah. movies. Uh, the first Puppet Master it was a little bit of a letdown for me. And the first one was cool and it had the puppets kind of there a little bit. But the second movie, I mean, it brought the puppets out. It was almost like an action yeah. movie. One of my favorite puppets which is introduced in this movie is a little guy named yeah. Torch. Mine too. I always call him Blowtorch. <laughs> I don't know why, but his name is Torch. Uh, I love the guy so much. He's this little tiny guy, and, and if, if he was real, I'd give him a big hug. <laughs> um, and uh, he's got some really, really cool scenes. Basically, the movie is about Andre Toulon, who is the puppet master, the guy who came up with these puppets and the elixir mm -hmm. to bring them to life, no strings attached. Um, 
is resurrected actually by the puppets and is now looking for permanent bodies to put his soul into if he wants to have them live forever but he needs uh other people to make this happen for him uh for me it's 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 the first puppet master but like on steroids there's so many better kills yeah. there's so much better everything and the puppets they they really really look cool i mean there's probably some animatronic work that stop they did motion, yeah. there's stop motion uh there's some really really and just general puppetry yeah. you know offstage puppetry so uh, they're, they're just fun yeah. you get to see them almost like you almost feel like it's real um but that's why i picked uh the second one and it's actually funny that you chose the second one because out of all the puppet master movies i think that's the one i've seen the least and that i've seen so for such a long time oh, so, so i'm glad you picked it because it kind of like re restarts my memory especially if you like torch yeah you definitely are gonna love this one yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna have to rewatch that yeah, one for sure so leo what is your number three pick my number three pick is the movie evil tunes it's definitely a movie made for a horny teenage kid. <laughs> the movie is basically about a group of absolutely gorgeous women who are all some type of like lingerie model or playboy model in real life or something. Barely actresses, no offense. Um, <laughs> who go to a house to house sit. And basically they end up in the possession of almost like a necro necronomicon. Mm -hmm. And the this creature gets summoned from the, the this type of book and it ends up bringing to life basically this like who framed roger rabbit style horny cartoon beast yeah and uh, the girls walk around in uh lingerie they're playing all these little sexy games i mean you you the only reason anyone loves this movie is for the girls <laughs> right and for the ridiculousness of a beast running around yeah. Uh, doing these kinds of things and but it's it's absolutely 100% a guilty pleasure I remember watching it as a, as a kid and just being like well I mean not kid I was definitely a teenager yeah. teenager and uh, it was just like it was funny it, it was it's something that you don't watch and critique it almost had that same kind of full moon feel yeah and it has that just absolutely fun kind of feeling to it so yeah, see, this is my first time hearing about it. i've never heard of this movie yeah. before you told me you know you're number three who, who want to see a little something different in terms of the typical you know kind of blood and nudity uh genre and that that delivers tenfold i'll have to watch it i think you absolutely have to watch it and then we have to hear frank's uh review <laughs> yeah. on evil tunes but yeah that, that that was my number three pick okay let's get into your number two my number two pick is also a sequel it is one of my favorite camp movies besides the friday the 13th movies and it's sleepaway camp 2. Mm -hmm. at the time when i first saw it it was just a random tape on a video store shelf and i don't know do you remember have you seen the tape cover oh yeah that's the only thing that i can actually remember from i remember the first movie a lot because it was so iconic but yeah. the sequels this is the only thing i remember is that girl with the backpack slung over her shoulder and it had like the, the jason hockey mask and the freddy glove a and, version of it yeah. and i remember renting it yeah i don't remember what i don't remember what it what happened but i remember renting it because i saw the freddy yeah. glove and i'm like oh this is some kind of match and that's actually exactly <laughs> why i had rented it myself and it's funny because the girl that's on the cover is just a model she's not the she's scene not the, the scene is not in the scene is not in there but ironically there ha there are scenes in which uh those implements are used but she does kill with a chainsaw uh, she kills with a Freddy glove. Really? And at some point, someone has a hockey mask on. Uh, and I think that's why I love it. It's 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 the kitchen sink thrown into it. So long story short, the, the first movie, Angela, is seen to be the killer. You know, spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, and then in the second one, there's a complete change in tone. And what ends up happening is it goes now with a very almost tongue-in-cheek funny uh, campy kind of approach uh, no pun intended it creates this environment of a very fun summer camp um, they sing songs I mean it's your typical you know something that you would picture yeah. in a, any kind of uh, camp, setting, a camp yeah. movie um, and again once you kind of fall in love with that cover art yeah that's it you're, that drew me in. You're, you're hooked into it and it's just a very fun movie again lots of beautiful girls in it I think the character of Allie who is the the main kind of bad girl character. She was a lot of fun to watch. Um, it's, uh, the, the kills are inventive, they're fun. Like I said, a lot of them are actually played for laughs. It's not your typical scary movie, but there's a really fun tone that kind of gives you that like campfire setting. It gives you that like, 
you know, th there's really no movie like it when you watch it on tape. There's no Friday, no Friday the 13th movie even has that same kind of tone. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why I, I really, really love that movie. And if you had to pick a favorite scene? It's pretty much any scene that the, that the female <laughs> bad girl, <laughs> Allie, it? is in. And she's bad, but she's not like re reprehensible bad. Uh, you kind of like look forward to seeing like how, what kind of havoc is she gonna cause? What's she gonna do this time? So that brings us to your number one. To the number one pick. And for me, my number one pick is a little movie called Waxwork. Waxwork. Waxwork is a movie about a group of teenagers <laughs> in the 80s. Who would have guessed that? <laughs> And there is a uh, waxwork in the neighborhood, and two of the girls get invited to this waxwork, but there's a connection to one of the other characters. The grandfather of one of the characters was killed by the man who runs the waxwork. So all the characters get together for a free uh, courtesy viewing of this waxwork, with the intention is actually for the, the, the spirits of those people to be sucked into the displays and end up having them being able to come to life later on in the story. So this is pretty much a, a, a hunt for souls. The owner of the waxwork, that's his intention. But these kids are going there because they're thinking they're gonna go see a free waxwork right. display. They have some that have victims and there are some that are victimless. The ones that have victims already have already claimed a person. Mm -hmm. So then there are victimless displays. So one of the characters goes and sees a Wolfman character, but he's just sitting in the room by himself. So. He, he drops his lighter, his lighter goes flying, so then he goes and gets it and gets sucked into this world. And he's no longer in the waxwork. He is in a complete immersive VR experience, for lack of a better term. He's just, it's completely there. And the each scenario in each waxwork is unique to the waxwork itself. There's one of a Dracula type character. There is a Night of the Living Dead kind of homage uh, scene and all there's a there's a mummy one yeah and all these characters all these characters that get sucked into each one they're sucked into the world yeah. there's a Marquis de Sade one that's the good girl who would never do anything naughty or bad is now just like it's, it, it exists on so many levels again it's one of those cool VHS cover art movies yeah and it was just such a joy to discover that and it still remains one of my favorites. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, we we had this little period where we would uh, we would hang out, we would watch movies. You mm -hmm. would pick something that I have never seen before mm -hmm. that's near and dear to you, and I would do the same. One of the ones you chose was Wax. Wax that was my first time seeing it. So yeah, I had a when you go back as, as an adult now in two thousand you know eighteen whatever, or whatever yeah. and you go back and watch these movies, you gotta have an open mind. Yeah, <laughs> especially with a movie like this. But I I enjoyed it. You do like raw meat. Please, if not, we can have some. No, that's fine. I haven't had steak tartare in a long time. Steak tartare? Oh, yes. Steak tartare. That's a, that's a good uh, uh, point to make because when you're introduced to these movies in a younger age, you're, you, you have a different level of believability yeah. in your mind. I know uh, my roommate has oftentimes said uh, he used to like the movie Cyborg with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And then he watched the movie as an adult and goes, man, I must have been a dumb <laughs> child. Because it's just like you, you, the, the movies appear different to you because of your understanding of the world or even mm -hmm. how we critique movies. Yeah. We understand them very, very differently at a younger age. Um, but the thing is, every time I watch it, I go back to that same joy. And it's funny, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this top five is, is, is in a way, maybe it would interest you guys to go and check these movies out for yourself. But mm -hmm. we want you to keep an open mind if you do decide to, and you know that way you could enjoy them a lot more. Oh yeah, for so, sure. Most because if I didn't keep an open mind, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed Waxwork. No sauce, but the sauce makes the dish. That's so, why Waxwork is my number one on yeah. my obscure movies list again not super freaking uh you know no one's ever heard of it or it's only ever existed on vhs but you know it's 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 such a fun movie and it's one i mean i could watch all i could watch evil tunes slum uh, uh sleepaway camp 2 
uh, Waxwork, uh, Puppet Master 2, Chopping Mall. I could watch those and just... They all kind of have the same feel. That yeah. like 80s, something went wrong. Your top five has a, a very... Uh, there's a linear... Theme. Yeah, yeah right. there's, there's a consistency yeah. within them. And it just, that just goes to show what I, what I love what in, love, in yeah. horror movies or slasher movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so that, that's my top five list. So that's all the time we got for you guys today. Thank you for watching as always, but be sure to tune in to next week's episode because what we're going to be doing, we're going to be delving into our personal favorite film mm -hmm. franchises. Mm -hmm. uh, one for Leo and a franchise for myself. So Frank, what's going to be the film franchise that you're going to be discussing? Well, I'll leave that as a mystery for right now until the oh, time comes. Okay. Uh, but why don't you tell us what you are going to be discussing first? Yeah, absolutely. I will be discussing my favorite film franchise of all time, which is Friday the 13th. It's got about 12 films in the series. I'm going to be discussing about three films per episode. So it'll be about four episodes altogether. Uh, we're not going to present them back to back. We're going to split them up with Franks and a couple other episodes along the way. Yeah, and I really want to go check out uh, uh, the Toon one. <laughs> Evil Tunes. Yeah, yeah, I really want to check out Evil Tunes now. <laughs> Please check For out Evil Tunes. It just sounds like yeah. a good movie. Yeah, it's it's an enthralling epic. Uh, so, but <laughs> thank you guys for uh, watching, and we yes. hope you enjoyed this episode. And thank you guys for being a part of this. It means a lot yeah. to us. So, Frank, what's going to be the film franchise that you're going to delve into? I'll leave that as a mystery for oh, now. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh shit! Oh shit! I was gonna do that to you. today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Frank, what's gonna be the film franchise that you're gonna be discussing? Well, I'll leave that as a mystery for. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. But I, I am. Anticipating it. I actually am gonna go. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't. Oh, I can't do that. You call action, brother. Oh yes. <laughs> Make <me> feel good. <laughs> well, that's all the time we got for you guys. <laughs> is a new um mm. Del delving <laughs> yeah <laughs> what was my line uh, but tell us what you are going to be discussing first <laughs> i want to laugh sorry i want to go oh, oh. Uh, i just want to try one complete oh, oh, oh. without without, you try, you, without you try. cracking okay <clears throat> so frank what's going to be the film franchise that you're going to delve into well i'll leave that as a new <laughs> Yeah. All right. We can do this. Okay. Settle. <coughs> <laughs> uh, how about this? I'll just say it over and over until until we get it out of our systems. Oh. 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 Oh.